shuko. So the shuko, the limited historical knowledge I have, it was probably a weapon of the ninja. I don't think samurai would have used it because it was an unusual weapon. And the shuko, the hand claw, was known as a kakushibuki, which means one that's hidden. So the samurai were a proud warrior, the military, so they, their weapons were out in the open. They, unless it's a shuriken or something, they had swords, spears, right out in the open. But a ninja who had to infiltrate or sneak into a place probably would hide these things. Now where they come from, as with most things in history, we're not sure. So whenever someone tells you this is the way it was, be skeptical. Do you know what that means? Be a bit suspicious. Suspicious of the source, because none of us were around six, seven hundred years ago. Yeah. My guess from my study is it came from farming tools, which a lot of things over there did, like the kama, the sai, jute. So this is called an asano, which is like a handrake. Have you ever seen something like this somewhere, maybe? So this was for shallow agriculture. They would use it to rake leaves, to dig holes, to even bale rice up and stuff like that. So look at the size of that. Now this is a modern one you can literally buy today on Amazon. This would be perfect if you like, who likes to do landscaping or gardening? This is what you would use, okay? So that kind of looks like a claw, doesn't it, in a way? Then they also use like this bill hook. Who can pronounce that? Um, Try it. Asakagi. Asakagi, which is a bale hook. Have you ever seen one of these before, maybe on a farm? They would yeah. use these to stab hay and throw it. Yeah. Well, it was also used in the Far East as well, again, for rice and things like that. It's also a fishing gaff, so some people, when they catch big fish in the ocean, they use that to hook the gill of the fish to lift it into the boat. Hooks have been around a long time. Later in history, get me the second one, please. Tekokagi, which are claws that cover the hand. But do you see how they kind of represent that in a way? Sure. And they're like multiples of this. So what superhero looks like this? Wolverine. Wolverine. Yeah, right? Is he DC or Marvel? Marvel. Are you sure? I'm sure. Was he invented by Stan Lee? Um, he's an X-Man, so I'm not sure. Yeah, he was not. But he is one of them. But his kind of come out of his hand, don't they? They're kind of yeah. built in with the adamantium. They just keep just like thinks about it, doesn't he? And they pop out. Yeah. But this is what the ninja would have had, okay? So this is a version, and I'll pass these around, that's much larger. You wouldn't be able to hide those very easily, but you wouldn't want to meet those in the dark, would you? Because you be, they would make up myths about you and stories, and they would say, he had claws like a lion or a bear or a cat. And all I remember is it was dark out, and I had these scratches, and I swear it was like a half bear, half man. And then he scaled a tree like a grizzly, and he fought like a tiger. And then what would happen is you would go back to your camp and you would start a legend. And then the ninja loved that because they loved stories about them because it made them more feared and more powerful. Then the samurai would be really scared of the ninja warrior and they would run away. So now, closer in history, these from the Togakure Ryu are the shuko that the ninja might have worn. We're not sure. Look at these. You see them? See how long those claws are? I'll pass that around. Be careful, it's very sharp. You have a band that goes around your wrist, and then this goes on your hand. These are the modern ones. See how, see how these look sure. compared to these? Can you see? What's the difference? Anybody, yeah? This? Between them. See how short these are? Sure. These hooks come out farther, don't they? So these are easier to climb with. The modern ones that are machine made are very close and they're not actually very realistic. Now, what types of weapons were these? Called soto no mono, which means an item that would be outside of you. Again, these were hidden. They wouldn't be carried. If you were caught on the street with these, you'd be killed or arrested. So they would hide them. And what do we call weapons that are hidden? Kakushibuki. Anything like a kusari fundo, shuriken. Shuko would have been in that category. Anything that 
that looks like something, but it's actually something else. Could these be used for climbing trees? What do you think? It assist. Possibly. 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 I have climbed with not this set, but actually this set, which I bought. I bought these in 1984, I think. But you see the difference? These are extremely hard to climb with mm -hmm. because they're so small. If I was to stick this in a tree, it would really rip the back of my hand because all the weight of your body would be hanging on these. Watch, watch what it does. See how it pulls your hand? Sure. So if you were to use these to climb, you would use them in a way that you probably don't think. They're not made to scale straight up. You hug the tree. These are good for climbing. You hug the tree and hold the back. And you would have also uh, ashiko, which are on your feet. And you would use them to shimmy up the tree. But you would not climb like Spider-Man straight up. It would kill your hand. Even with leather and stuff on there, it still hurts too much. Not sure if they were actually used for climbing. They probably were, but there's no real evidence for that. But it probably was true that if the ninja had these, it would assist them, like someone said, up a tree over a castle wall or something like that. Could they be used to stop swords? If he was cutting down on me, watch out everybody. Tell me if you think, if I'm here, if you think this is smart. No. No. Well, I see no. this all the time on the internet. Is it possible that the metal could stop it? Yes, it is. But what are the percentages? What are the chances that I can move here and stop this thing? Very low. Very low. I've actually seen on the internet people going like this, literally going back and catching it under their head. Is is that smart or dumb? Dumb. <laughs> seen it done where they come in with two here and they stand. That's a little better. At least you have two here to stop it. If I had to do that, I would certainly move offline and not have my head here so that my hand would be cut off instead of my head. But if I was to stop a sword, I wouldn't stop the sword. I would let the sword go by, and then I would use it after to hold the sword. But if you're a ninja, do you want to run up against a katana? I don't. So they would use these probably to escape more than fight. I can't win against someone in armor, but I can scratch him in the night. So these are very good at distracting the opponent. Very unusual to take down a sword with Muto Dori. I don't want to see anyone ever, one of my students, teaching this. First of all, it would take dozens of years to get good at that, and it's not practical, okay? I'm showing these to you just as a piece of history. Now, when I was 20 or 18, I would study this all the time, all this history. I don't think it's very practical now. At the dojo here, we're limited on what we show with historical weapons because they just don't apply anymore to the 21st century. They're fun but I'd rather teach you how to stop a bully or defend yourself in a real street fight than against stuff like this. But tonight we're just gonna work on these out of respect for where they came from. You would use these in your taijutsu, your body art. These would be an extension of your hand, okay? I've heard of other weapons being like, I don't know, putting soil or being peed on to rust them to damage the opponent. Do you yeah. know if these were, that was I've read case? a couple of accounts where they say it's possible they could poison these. But think of the practicality of it. Where would the poison, you have to put the poison on the spikes. Then you would have to store them. Well, if you're storing them in your kimono, on your arm or something, and you stab yourself, who's going to be poisoned? You. 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 It's possible. But, Likely. Emilio, if a swordsman's here, and, he's, and I get my, first of all, do I have time to put these on? Probably not. You think I'm going to have time to put these in poison in my pocket before he attacks? No. So my guess is they probably weren't used for poison. But again, I wasn't there. History is written by the winner of the battle. Possible. All this is possible. It's fun. It's movie stuff. But it doesn't help us on the street. Let these sit in some dung or something, some manure, and they would rust. They might get tetanus or something if I scratch them. Name is called shuko, some people call it teko, tiger hands or hand hooks, same thing, same thing. D depending on where you see it on the internet, you'll find different uses for it. I'm not going to show anything with the sword. Um, we'll play around a little bit using these with taijutsu, so you have to be very careful. The ones that I'm going to give you tonight have pieces of tape on them, so they're not sharp and you won't hurt yourself. 
Some of you are going to get ones that are a little bit with an edge, so you have to be super careful. If you don't look, you'll scratch your face, okay? If you were going to train with these, I would recommend you get rubber ones. And don't ever train with these, because these are like literally bear claws. And no matter how good your control is, these will scratch anybody, okay? Do you see the difference? This is like, uh, I don't know, level one, level ten. I would want these more than this. Okay? Yes, sir. So let's go into a technique that's pretty easy, but with the claws, we have a huge, huge advantage. You ready to try it? Just today, I don't want to start up like we don't normally do. Normally, we're, we're doing, I'll have my hands up. Please don't hurt me. But if I do that, he sees them. He sees them. So let's play. A little, let's play the little ninja a little bit. Maybe we'll leave our hands down and we'll say, please don't hurt me. And he says, too bad. So we're going to go straight from here to here. Here, boom, I'm placing, he's getting the, the claws here and on his hand. Because if I don't do anything to this hand, watch what happens. Ugh. I'm going to take a second hand right out, of, right out of play by pressing on it. And then look where I'm at. Look what's open. Of his groin and then the hand that's stabbed his arm my left hand that started is going to rake his face or his eyes and then we're going to run off into the night mr norfleet attacks pow kick groin swipe his face one more time different angle pow kick groin swipe face and then we run so for this technique we're going to go ahead and use all of the weapons we're not just going to use the tines to grab and scratch. We're actually going to use the backs to our advantage as well, because those are, those are iron and hard as well. So we're going to be down here. He's going to reach out and grab us, and we're going to knock him up. We're going to use that metal. It's harder than our hands, and then we're going to scratch, and we're just going to rake it down and get away while he's crying in pain. So what's happening? We're going to get him out of there. We're going to grab a hold and knee and scratch. He might come in. We'll go here and we'll just turn and get away. We're just going to use the backs. Use them to our advantage. Up and scratch. And get out. That's the advantage. You. you. Do I now? Not here. Why? Did I take his balance? Right now he could hit, draw a weapon. So when he if they were to grab and I was trying to escape, you must use your legs to step out. Then from here, you're getting down and raking the groin. <laughs> Just back here. Any, any of these targets would work. But I want his head to come forward. So if I pull and go back, he's going to go back. And this, that's perfectly fine to do. But for now, I want to back up and rake here. This is protecting. Once I rake the inner thigh or wherever, I hit with a taisho. Then these curl onto the top lip to rip it off. So these points will go right through the gums. So you can imagine this here, and then down with the points. He's going to go right to the ground from there. Now on the way down, I'll rip. Where do you think a shako ken comes from? Shako shuko, very close. Ichi, ni, here. This left hand is also pulling his arm down. See it? These are very dangerous. There's not a lot of movement to these. It's not fancy. It's simple. What would a uh, tiger do? One, two, that's what a tiger's gonna do. Take it this far and stop right there. Go. From behind, step out again. I'm gonna swipe him as my, my near side hand sneaks around to, to grab a hold of his, his uh, tricep. As I've tiger claw that, I'm gonna come over here and claw this. Step out, swipe. I'm grabbing here, and then I'm here. Rotate it over. It hurts him because I'm, I'm grabbing his hand, and then down with the, the pain here. Swipe and run. Grab, step away. He can't strike. Hit him in the belly with the da damage him. You just cat claw up. Grabbing down with the points. Take his muscle away and run. Okay, so 
rule number one, we want to make sure we stop the sword with the claws. So we're standing here. We don't hit his nose. Go, and we stand right away. And we hold it here so we can kick him and defeat our opponent. 